Hello, welcome, welcome back to another episode of When Ordinary is No Longer Enough. I am Pamela Clark and I'm accompanied by my husband, Kerry A. Clark. You want to say hello? Yes, hello everyone. Hello, it's been a while since yes. we've actually done one of these, Kerry. It's been a while. We ran into some technical difficulties, but we're back at it. Things are going pretty smoothly. Keep your fingers crossed, even though I don't believe in that. However, we're working on it to make uh, our podcast available once again. Here we are. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny to hear that we ran into technical difficulties when you're the ITIS um, person. But hey, we'll just leave that right there. We are nonetheless <laughs> glad to be back and glad to share more information regarding what we do. That's mm -hmm. helping people become no longer ordinary, okay. set apart, Good. different. Right? Yes. So that's what we're here to do. So we're going to kind of pick up where we left Hold off. Hold on. She threw a little shade at me, guys. So I don't know if I can kind of let her slide on that. Yes, we had te technical difficulties. But they were somewhat out of my control until I decided to take back control. Here we are. We knew you'd fix that. Yes. Nonetheless, <laughs> we're going to pick up um, where we left off mm -hmm. um, an episode ago. Um, we're going to pick up today really talking about incomplete messages, Carrie. Yes. So you want to kind of, I guess, go back, right, and talk about the episode before now that leads us to where we are today with our incomplete messages? So here's the premise or the thought behind that. Now, you got to remember, we're focusing on what we call when ordinary is no longer enough. So what normally happens when, when people hear a message they forget any subsequent or pre-messages or things that lead up to them. So the average person thinks that they can get things very, very quickly, meaning one message is all they need. So they end up doing what I call having these incomplete messages, which gives them these unmet expectations. Well, now this all goes back to um, life growth area number three, three. Yes. spirituality yes. Yeah. so this Absolutely. is where this is where this is connected so yes. we're talking about maybe some of the incomplete messages that people may hear yeah. in the different areas that they tend to um, find themselves in yeah so that's really where we are yes yeah. for example you go to church one Sunday out of a month yeah you're gonna get, you're <laughs> and gonna you get got a message yeah. but you're expecting yeah. all these grandiose things to happen and you've yeah. not gone through the process of becoming extraordinary Yes. Because I think one of the things that, that we've talked about and one of the things I know that I've heard you say that mm -hmm. these incomplete messages can lead in unmet expectations, expectations right? Yes. Because we have expectations that these messages are going to do for us, but it ends up in expectations that aren't met. That's right. So. It also happens in, uh, but more importantly, it happens in relationships. Oh, because yeah. a couple may not go through the expectations, for example, just this week as we record this, I didn't deliver the message quite as well as I should have, which led to me having some unmet expectations, which this is like take four of our intro outro. But if you go through the process and deliver the message well and be receptive to messages, then you can go to the next level. All right, that sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what. I personally am going to bookmark this message because in his own Kerry Clark way, he admitted to not being correct, right? Yes. To doing something that wasn't Incomplete, quite. not yes. incorrect. <laughs> More important, incomplete, which that's what this message is all about. We know. We know. So we're going to we're going to pause right there for a second yes. and we're going to give you an opportunity to watch um, a little bit more about incomplete messages mm -hmm. coming from Kerry and then we'll join you back on the other side. Is that good? Yep, sounds good. All right, we'll see you shortly. All right, good morning. Let's begin. Let's pick up where we left off, life growth area number three, our spirituality, not like anyone else. This is the message is about you becoming unlike those that are around you, having religion and how you do church like anyone else. As you know, ordinary is no longer enough. That's the premise. That's the theme that we want to carry out through these teachings is that Ordinary is not enough. What do you do when ordinary is no longer working? And trust me when I say this, ordinary is definitely not enough. For today's topic, or this at least this morning's session, we want to talk about an incomplete message that leads to unexpected expectations. 
Church and religion, although I hate to say it, has done a work on us. It's done something to us. It's polluted how we think sometimes. It has altered some things in us. And many of us are fighting with religion versus church versus God versus Christianity, meaning these things aren't all the same. And that's where we're struggling because we see so many different things. We go to our church for help and they can't help us. We pray for healing and and we're not getting healed. We're giving up on Christ when we don't have a good example of what that really means. It's done a work on us. We got people fighting all around us on different subjects and topics because one side says it's this way and another side says it's the other way. Ordinary, average, common, that's not enough. What if I were to tell you that everything you've been taught may have been incorrect teaching for you? What if the message that you heard was not a good message for you? What if it wasn't even meant for you? What would you do? How many times have you gone into a service and you heard a message that just didn't fit with you? What do you do? Are you going to do like everyone else and say, well, that wasn't for me? I remember there were times I used to go to church and and I'd hear people teaching. I'd say, oh, that's good for so-and-so. That's good for someone else. Not once did I think, (laughs) most people do this, that, oh, that's, that's for me. See, the uncommon approach would be, hmm, let me think about what this passage of Scripture just said and how it applies to me, my life, what I have going on, and why am I hearing it at this time? The conclusion we would face is, if I heard this message today, why in the world would God give it to me? Obviously, it's not for someone else. It's for me. When I started to change my thoughts and say, every message that I hear On a Sunday, it's for my upcoming week. God has given me a preview of something I need to know so that I can face the challenge that may be coming my way. And you know, I say challenge, it might not even be challenge. It may be an experience. It may be an accomplishment that's coming my way. And he's given me the instructions on how to handle it. It may be something going on in our family. It may be some goal or some gain that we have that this word is meant for me. That's uncommon thinking. We have to get out from the approach. We have to leave the approach that, oh, that's good for my family member. That's good for my daughter. That's good for my son. That's good for my friend. That's good for my husband. That's good for my wife. Oh, but we always skip out on the phrase, this is what I need. It's our goal to find what we need. I do a teaching on finding the good in others. I think that'll come in later sessions down the road. But And what it says is I have to look for good. There's a saying in life that says, whatever you look for, you'll find. If you look for a cheating spouse, that's what you will find. In fact, whatever's inside of you that you look for in yourself, that's what you find in others. If you find inadequacy in yourself, you find it in others. If you find confidence in yourself, you find confidence in others. If you think well of yourself, you'll think well of others. Let me continue back to the religion and the church and this topic of an incomplete message. And I say incomplete message is because we don't always have the whole picture. We want it to be complete, but it's not. Life is not completed in a day. In fact, it takes years, a lifetime to complete a life. You see, if we can get out of thinking everything comes quickly in life, We all understand that everything is not so quick. In fact, there's nothing quick. You can't get a degree quickly. You can't finish high school. You can't get a high school diploma quickly. It takes time. This is a common dilemma that plagues us all. We want to do things like ordinary people and expect some uncommon results. Ordinary people won't know this and fall prey to it every single day. They fall prey to the fact that I want new results, but I'm doing it the same old way. And it's it's in this 
reason why ordinary people leave their church not to return. This is the reason ordinary people give up on God. You've heard people say, ah, I'm never trying that prayer again because they treated prayer like ordinary people. In fact, I would venture out to say they don't even know what prayer is. If you got them to define prayer, they'd never know what it was or know what it is. In fact, if you ask those closest to you, will you pray for me? Most of them will not know how. When was the last time you heard your mom pray, your dad pray, your brother pray, your sister pray? A real prayer, not those that I say, now I lay me down to sleep or the one you pray over a meal. Thank you, Lord, for this food and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about a real prayer, prayer that lifts your family, prayer that puts the situation right in the throne room of the most high that produces results enough on prayer. We can, I can talk about that all day. Back to this subject. The majority of churches teach messages that are not wrong. So get that out of your head. The message isn't wrong. It's the receivers that are wrong, that are off course, that are normal, that are like everyone else. So therefore, the message isn't wrong. It's just simply incomplete because you need more of it. The message is incomplete because one setting, one session, one Sunday out of a year is definitely not enough. That's ordinary. That's Average, that's common. Not reading your Bible, that's not enough. I'll leave you with this. There are incomplete messages because there are incomplete people. And because of those incomplete messages, we live a life of unmet expectations. Hey, hey, we're back, yes. y'all. We're back. We hope that you got some nuggets from those words that were shared with you by Carrie. Certainly hope that you can um, take those things and apply them to your day-to-day -day life. And, and really, you know, at the end of the day too, if you have questions, guess what y'all? We want to hear from you, right? Because we want to make certain that we're doing our part yes. to help you reach the next level. That's right. To help set you apart um, because ordinary is just no longer enough, y'all. Um, Carrie, do you have any outgoing thoughts for our friends here? Yes, I, I just want to be an encouragement to you that when you hear a message, especially those that you get regularly, uh, don't take them for granted. Just look at them as they're for you. Yeah. Take them internally. Make notes of them. Make, take action items. Don't leave anything on the table because that one message or one teaching or one session, I like to say it this way, I'm going to learn from every situation I find myself in, so I always look for takeaways. That means from any person, any message, any teacher, any situation, so that I can grow. You have yes. to be open to that, right? Yes. That takes being open. That doesn't mean you might fall for anything, right? Correct. I mean, that's not what you're saying. There, no, but. Well, in, in, even in, in that case, what you do is you take what you can use. Makes you sense. You always look for what you can use, and you throw the rest of it away. It's like, you know, having a, a, a plate full of, full of food, and you eat what you like, and you throw the rest away. Yeah. I was thinking about Tyler, he came yeah. on. No, yeah. But anyway, nonetheless, I digress. Yeah, yeah. Tyler, uh, you know, looks through his and he eats the, the things he likes the best. Yeah, he prioritizes his meal. Sure, he yeah. says, this is what I like. I'm going to eat the, the, the not so good, part, yeah, yeah, the least favorite first uh -huh. and save the best for last. And that's the way you should do everything in life. Get the things that are best, internalize them, and take them with you again. Uh, this is when ordinary is no longer enough, so we're always going to be te teaching you from that vantage point that average, ordinary, normal, those, those terms, they're not good enough for you. In fact, we're going to do everything in our power. We're going to fight against you being average. We're going to fight against you being normal. We're going to fight against you being uh, just like everyone else. So we're going to the next level. So You know why? Why? Because we're all created, right? That's right. That's right. In His image, yes. but all given different things. Yes. So. Um, that's, that's, I think, a great a great closing course there. There's a couple more things I want to share with you. I want you to know and remember that you can always find more information about us at carrieclark.com. We're on all of the different social media platforms, so certainly find us on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter. 
um, LinkedIn. We're on all the social media platforms. And then we've got a few products too, guys, that we'd love to share with you. And I'll let Carrie share a little bit more about that as well. Yeah. There's one I want to share personally with you. Yeah. <laughs> this book, which I don't think we've shared it before on any podcast yeah. other than some advertisement maybe at the end. But it is available. Uh, this book, No Longer Common, is an expanded version of the teachings that we're given when ordinary is no longer known. Please avail yourself of this. Yep. All right, y'all. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. As always, share, 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 right? We, we hope that we've given you something that you can use. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. And we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Any feedback, comments that you have for us, even questions, guys, don't hesitate to reach out, okay? And until next time, Carrie. Hey, take your life to the next level. All right. Thanks, y'all. All right. I'm in between my <coughs> and and you can always say stuff like, now, Carrie, tell me what this means. That way you don't have to be studied. Okay, just a little bit. Right there, just a little bit. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome back. Welcome back. It's been wonderful. We probably need to speak up a little bit. We're going to talk about it. Hello, and... Let's do it again. Countdown. Recording of S3, E4, take two, and five, four, three, two, Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Carrie A. Clark and Company. Nope. It is not right. That's not just been too long. <laughs> Alright. S3, E4, take three and five, four, three, two.